Mr. President. There, the civil and the president promissory note program and a bond insurance to settle inherited local debts and contractual obligations and refunds to state governments for projects executed on behalf of federal government approvals for Delta and Taraba states. I wish to inform the Senate that we have received approval of the National Assembly via letter reference NAS, stroke CNA, stroke 106, stroke volume 11, stroke 004, dated 29 January 2019 for refunds to Delta and Taraba state governments through the issuance of promissory notes for projects executed on behalf of the federal government. The Senate may wish to note that following a review of the approval from the National Assembly, the following were observed. <clears throat> One, while the Federal Executive Council approved the total sum of 78,601,631,430 16 Kobo, as reimbursement to Delta and Taraba state governments, the National Assembly approved 90 billion 236 million 461,031 Naira 36 Kobo, which is higher than the amount approved by the Federal Executive Council. Two, the National Assembly did not approve any reimbursement to Bauchi and Kogi state governments, whereas the Federal Executive Council approved reimbursements for them. <clears throat> the Senate may note the provisions of the Public Procurement Act 2007 which empowers the Bureau of Public Procurement to approve vendors and contract sums. The amounts presented to the National Assembly for approval were duly certified for reimbursement by the Bureau of Public Procurement before they were approved by the Federal Executive Council. Since the Bureau of Public Procurement is charged with responsibility of approving contract sums, and there is a need for compliance with the Public Procurement Act 2007, I wish to request that you forward to us details relating to the amounts approved by the National Assembly for Delta and Taraba State in excess of what was satisfied by the Bureau of Public Procurement for necessary certification and approval. Meanwhile, the federal government shall proceed with implementation by reimbursing the amounts approved by the Federal Executive Council. Furthermore, I wish to suggest that you review their reimbursements earlier submitted in favor of Bauchi and Kogi State governments. While looking forward to your timely consideration of the request, please accept the single Senate President the assurance of highest regards. Yours sincerely, Mama Jubwari. Letter from Mr. President. Request for confirmation renewal of appointment of Honorable Omolola Abiola Edewo as Executive Director, Corporate Services, Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation. In accordance with provisions of 5-4 of, of the Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation Act, I write to forward for confirmation by the Senate the name of Honorable Omolola Abiola Idewo as Executive Director of Corporate Services, Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation for a second and final term of five years. The nominee's curriculum vita is attached herewith. It is my hope that the Senate will consider and confirm the nominee in the usual expeditious manner. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Mahmoud Bwari. <clears throat> Letter from Mr. President. Dear distinguished Senate President, presidential decision to decline assent to the Chartered Institute of Training and Development of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2018. Postion to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on the 28th February 2019 to decline presidential assent to the Chartered Institute of Training and Development of Nigeria Establishment Bill 2018, recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill because there are concerns that the Institute does not possess the capacity to undertake the numerous duties and responsibilities imposed on it under the Act. In addition, the bill criminalizes the practice of training and development without registration with the Institute, even though no description or definition of the term training and development is provided in the bill. This will lead to an unacceptable ambiguity in the operation of the Institute and disruption to the many various sectors of the economy in which training and development occurs. Please accept, distinguished Senior President, the assurance of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Mahmoud Bwari. <clears throat> Dear Senior President, Presidential decision to decline assent to the Nigeria Aeronautical Research and Rescue Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, 
I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on the 28th February 2019 to decline presidential assent to the Nigerian Aeronautical Search and Rescue Bill 2018, recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill because there are many inconsistencies with the bill, and the bill is not in tandem with the relevant international civil aviation organization, ICAO regulations. Some of the issues identified are itemized below. Section 1 of the bill provides that the principal objective <clears throat> is to incorporate the Chicago Convention into Nigerian law. The convention is already incorporated by virtue of Section 3.1 of the Civil Aviation Act 2006. B, Section B of the bill establishing the NISA negates the provision of Section 3.3.0 of the Civil Aviation Act and Part 14.3 of the Nigeria Civil Aviation Regulation as the proposed content of Section 4 are already contained in the Civil Aviation Act and Civil Aviation Regulations. Three, the bill is a duplication of the work of NEMA, <clears throat> Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority, Nigerian Airspace Management Agency, and other responsible organizations for search and rescue services in Nigeria, especially aeronautical search and rescue. We believe a better alternative to the proposed bill would be to leave the operations of the proposed to leave the operations of the proposed purpose of the bill with the Civil Aviation Act and the details addressed by the Civil Aviation Regulations. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my consideration. Yours sincerely, Mahmoud Bwari. <coughs> Dear Senate President, Presidential decision to decline assent to National Institute of the Credit Administration Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 19 March 2019 to decline presidential assent to the National Institute of Credit Administration Bill 2018, recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill because, one, the requirement that every member of staff or banks and other financial institutions should hold a National Institute of Credit Administration license before they are eligible to practice as credit managers is impractical and portends a recipe for crisis, more so when the Chartered Institute of Bankers does not require the staff of every bank to be its member. Two, Section 5 of the bill should be deleted in its entirety as the powers sought to be conferred on the NICA will be in conflict with the powers of some regulatory bodies such as Central Bank of Nigeria, Asset Management Corporation of Nigeria and Nigeria Insurance Commission. We suggest that the NICA should only be a training or certification provider for credit and management professionals in Nigeria with the responsibility to promote its objectives among persons who voluntarily elect to be its members. And three, the creation of a credit management institute such as NICA may unintentionally set up additional layer to credit management as it creates more multiplicity of regulations which cause more bottlenecks to the ease of doing business. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. Yes, sincerely, Mahmoud Bwari. Dear distinguished Senate President, presidential decision to decline assent to the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on the 27th of March 2019 to decline presidential assent to the Small and Medium Enterprises Agency Bill 2018, recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill for the following reasons. One, Section 32 of the bill introduces a 2.5 levy on the profit before tax of the target companies, which will increase the tax burdens of the companies while offering no direct benefit to them. Two, a 1% levy on imports will also add to the cost of doing business in the country. A 5% levy on luxury goods which duplicates efforts by the Federal Ministry of Finance to raise excise on such goods is a more sustainable manner to the benefit of the Federal Government Treasury. Two, the agency will have similar objectives to the Bank of Industry, particularly with regards to funding of small and medium enterprises. Accordingly, it's important to streamline its functions to avoid a duplication or overlap of functions with the other government institutions performing similar functions. 
And three, this bill has a likelihood of increasing public recurrent expenditure by the proposed creation of new public sector bodies. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Mahmoud Bari. Dear distinguished Senate President, presidential decision to decline assent to the Ajakuta Steel Company Completion Fund Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 19th March 2019 to decline presidential assent to the Ajakuta Steel Company Completion Fund Bill 2018, recently passed by National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill because appropriating one billion from the excess crude account is not the best strategic option for Nigeria at the time of budgetary constraints. The nation cannot afford to commit such an amount in the midst of competing priorities with long-term social and economic impact that the funds can alternatively deploy towards. Two, bills which seek to make appropriation of revenues to fund public expenditure should be consolidated in the Annual Appropriation Act so that these proposals pass through the traditional scrutiny that budget proposals are subjected to by the Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Budget and National Planning, and the National Assembly. Furthermore, as the excess crude account funds belong to the Federation, it will be proper to consult with the National Economic Council and the states. Three relevant stakeholders, such as Ministry of Mines and Steel Development and Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, were not fully consulted. The, the inputs of key stakeholders are necessary to create the optimal legal and regulatory framework, as well as the institutional mechanism to adequately regulate the steel sector. Please accept the single Senate President assurance of my consideration. Dear Senate President, presidential decision to decline assent to the National Housing Fund Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 19 March 2019 to decline presidential assent to the National Housing Fund Bill 2018 recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill for the following reasons. One, the various levies and obligations imposed by Section 4, 5, and 6 of the bill, including one, 2.5% of the ex factory price before transportation costs of each manufactured or imported 50 kg bag of cement or equivalent in bulk. Two, 2.5 monthly deduction from workers' salaries. Three, the compulsory investment requirement imposed on commercial banks, merchant banks, insurance banks, and pension fund administrators of a minimum of 10% of their profit before tax into the National Housing Fund will be disruptive, punitive, to a number of industries and sectors of the Nigerian economy, including cement, manufacturing, banking, insurance, pensions, and may also impact adversely the average Nigerian worker. Two, the provisions of Section 6.5 of the bill in relation to Pension Reform Act and real estate investment thereunder may undermine the administration of the pension industry by the National Pension Commission and adversely affect the safeguards that protect the pension industry against unreasonable investment risk. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration, yours sincerely, Mahmoud Bwari. Dear distinguished Senate President, presidential decision to decline assent to the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 19 March to decline presidential assent to the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria Bill 2018, recently passed by National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill for the following reasons. One, the failure to spell out in detail in the bill the required qualification and experience threshold of the directors and senior management staff with specific reference to developmental banking, risk management, and mortgage loan administration experience. Two, the provisions are in Section 9.2 providing that the liabilities of the Federal Mortgage Bank shall be rediscountable with the Central Bank of Nigeria without specifically stating in the bill that this is subject to usual criteria for normally assessing the rediscounting window of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Three, conflicts between Section 14 on General Reserve, Section 15 on funds of the Mortgage Bank, 
and Section 21 on annual reports, generally accepted development financial institution guidelines, and international financial report standards. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consideration. Yours sincerely, Muhammad Jubwari. Presidential decision to decline assent to the National Biotechnology Development Agency Bill 2018. Pursuant to Section 58.4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, I hereby convey to the Senate my decision on 19 March 2019 to decline presidential assent to the National Biotechnology Development Agency Bill 2018 recently passed by the National Assembly. I am declining assent to the bill because it fails to include the Ministry of Agri and Rural Development within the governing board of the agency, and two, the number of drafting issues and errors in the bill which could affect the interpretation and operation of the bill. For instance, the reference in Section 81A of the bill for the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission to set the emoluments and benefits of the board is incorrect, and the correct reference should be for the National Salaries, Income, and Wages Commission to perform this function. Please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurance of highest consultation. Yours sincerely, Mahmoud Jabwari. Let me, on behalf of my colleagues, um, announce.